Hello my friends, my name is Dr. Sayyid Nayar Reza Kasmi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, inguinoscrotal swellings in children. So obviously when we talk about inguinoscrotal swellings, we mean men children, though uh, we would be uh, touching a little bit about the inguino labial swellings, which is the counterpart of inguinoscrotal swellings in female children. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, dive into our today's topic straight away. So uh, these inguinoscrotal swellings, uh, obviously, which is a problem of the male children, is one of the most common surgical problems in the pediatric clinical practice. So every now and then you will come across uh, scenarios where uh, you would be asked to uh, see a child who's got a lump in his groin. So around uh, the, 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 the statistics say that around 10 to 20 per 1,000 live births, children might present with uh, inguinoscrotal swellings. Now, as I told you uh, that in females, we also have got an equal surgical counterpart, which is known as inguinolabial swellings, which are relatively less common as compared to inguinoscrotal swellings, which is a problem of the males. So what are inguinoscrotal swelling? These are basically lumps or swellings in the groin region. So it could be either on the right side or on, on the left side. But statistically, we have seen that uh, inguinoscrotal swellings are for some reasons more common on the right side. So we would be talking about approach. If you uh, come across a condition in which uh, you see that a child has got lump either in the right or the left groin. So how do you clinically approach that? And in the meantime, as we are clinically approaching that, we would talk about uh, some of the uh, common conditions, uh, how they occur. And we would also be talking about the management of these conditions. So inguinoscrotal swellings can be either inguinal, it can be scrotal or it can be inguinoscrotal. So please keep it in mind that inguinoscrotal is a combined dump. But again, it could be either inguinal, it could be either inguinoscrotal or it could be purely scrotal. So I will show you with the diagram. So let's say we have got, this is a rough diagram. I will draw another diagram. And then a third one. Now let's see, you come across a condition in which you find that the lump is there occupying the scrotum as well as the inguinal region. So we would call it as inguinoscrotal swelling. So inguinoscrotal swelling is where you find a lump in the groin, but part of it is scrotal and part of it is inguinal. So if you feel the scrotal part of the swelling, you would not be able to get above the swelling. So please keep it in mind. If you try to delineate the margins of that swelling and you are not able to get it. So if it's coming out of scrotum, but you are not able to feel the upper part or feel the end of that scrotal. That means it is extending into the inguine. So that is the inguinoscrotal swelling. So inguinoscrotal swelling would be extending into the groin as well into the scrotum. If you can reach above, again, the word is important. If you can reach above that swelling, the scrotal swelling, then it means it is a scrotal swelling only. So it is only confined to the scrotum. It is not an inguinal swelling. And if you find that the swelling is only in the groin and it is not extending into the scrotum, the scrotal sac is fine along with just the other thing, then that is purely an inguinal swelling. So you can have three types of swelling. You can have an inguinal scrotal swelling. You can have a scrotal swelling and you can have an inguinal swelling. So these are the three types of the uh, inguinoscrotal swellings which you might come across in your clinical practice. Now the question is if you come across a child who has got an inguinoscrotal swelling, so how do you clinically approach that swelling? So how would you move on? How would you examine that? How would you reach your diagnosis? This is very important. Let's talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about how to examine the inguinoscrotal uh, lump. So first of all, it's very important that uh, you've got privacy uh, you got a chaperone and then if the child is older 
uh, again you should make them standing and expose the area so you've got a clear view of the genital obviously in very small children you have to remove the diapers and now you have to examine them in the lying down position so then the next step is you look at the groin and see if you can see the lump so see if it is physically it is protruding and you can see it with your eyes if you cannot see it with your eyes uh, in both cases whether you can see it whether you can't see it the next step is then to feel the lump you have to physically with your hands like you know you have to wear gloves and you have to uh, feel for the lump and see where it is so again as i told you it could be either an inguinal it could be an inguinal scrotal or it could be a, a purely scrotal one so just see if you feel that the swelling is there only in the inguinal canal so it is in the inguinal region then you call it an inguinal swelling if you feel that the swelling is there partly in the inguinal canal as well as in the scrotal sac then you will call it an inguinal scrotal swelling and number three if you can reach above the swelling uh, that it is only uh, confined to the scrotal sac and it's not extending to the um, inguinal canal then obviously we call it as a scrotal swelling so for inguinal scrotal and scrotal swelling, the important thing is can you get above the lump so if you can get above the lump obviously it is confined to the scrotum and this is now a scrotal lump and obviously there are different uh, uh, differential diagnosis for those uh, scrotal muscles we will come to that later on but if you are not able to get above that lump so you can feel that lump but you cannot find the upper end then it means that that lump is extending into the inguinal canal so if you cannot get above the lump then it is an inguinoscrotal swelling and the most common cause of an inguinoscrotal swelling is a large indirect inguinal hernia so keep it in mind if it is an inguinoscrotal you cannot reach above that swelling it is an indirect inguinal hernia indirect inguinal hernia this is very important okay if the swelling is only confined to the inguinal canal so you can feel the upper and the lower end of the swelling and uh, it is not extending into the scrotum then you have to see whether that swelling in the inguinal region is above or below the inguinal ligament so let's say if this is the child so this is the inguinal region so the thing is that you need to see if this swelling is above or below so um, if I uh let me yes okay so if the swelling is above or is it below the inguinal ligament so it's very important so in both cases now you have seen whether the swelling is either above or it is below then the next step is to see if the child is older you ask the child to cuff and see whether you can feel for it so you will put your hand on that swelling and you will feel whether you can feel an impulse or not so if the child is coughing and you feel an impulse or you don't feel an impulse obviously for smaller children you can't do that so if a child is older and the swelling is uh, above the uh, inguinal canal and you can feel for the cough impulse then it is an inguinal hernia so please keep it in mind that it is an inguinal hernia but it's a small inguinal hernia so it is not able to come down into the scrotal sac so it is an inguinal hernia because it is above the inguinal ligament and you can you can feel a cough impulse again if it is above uh, the inguinal ligament and you cannot feel for the cough impulse then it could be either an inguinal hernia sometimes it could be incarcerated when you can't feel it might be an insisted hydrocele of the cord a small area which is insisted because it is closed on both sides so an insisted hydrocele of the cord or it might be a testicular maldescent especially if you feel that the that particular side of the scrotum is empty and you can't feel for the testes then the swelling in the inguinal canal is most probably an undescended test which is now uh, you know lying in the inguinal canal we call it as testicular maldescent or there could be a few other conditions like lipoma of the cord or it might be the iliac lymph nodes which have been enlarged because of an infection in the uh, draining areas of that lymph nodes so this is the differential diagnosis for inguinal swellings which are above the inguinal ligament and which do not have a cuff impulse 
if the swelling is below the uh, inguinal ligament then usually these are femoral uh, uh, lumps and in that condition if you feel a uh, cough impulse for a swelling which is below the inguinal canal it could be either a cephalopharic or it could be a femoral hernia or if you do not uh, uh, feel for the, uh, um, the cough impulse for a swelling which is inguinal swelling which is below the level of the inguinal ligament then it can either be a femoral hernia it could be an enlarged lymph node it might be a source abscess or it might be femoral aneurysm and but these are rare conditions so very rarely you come across uh, these types of swellings and vinyl swellings uh, which do not have a cuff impulse and uh, which are below the level of the inguinal ligament we call them the uh, femoral swellings or the femoral lumps okay uh, after discussing that now let's move on to uh, the scrotal swellings so for scrotal swellings if you can get above it if you can get above the inguinal scrotal swelling obviously you know that this swelling is now confined to the scrotal sac so it is a purely scrotal swelling now it is very important that you have to feel for the testes so when you got the swelling you also feel for the testes in the in that particular part of the hemiscrotum so if you can feel for the testes as a separate now from that swelling then the differential diagnoses are different but if you can't feel for the testes within that swelling then there are different pathologies for that so it is important to know whether you can separately feel for the testes in case of an isolated scrotal swelling or not so whether you can feel it or not then the next step would be to take a torch uh, darken the room and do trans illumination test you put the torch beneath the swelling and you see whether it trans illuminates or not so if there is a uniform glow coming red glow coming within the swelling we call it trans illumination positive but if there is very little light coming from it then we call it as trans illumination negative so if that testes and the swelling is separate and the mass trans illuminates then it is an epididymal cyst if the mass does not transilluminate in that case with the testes and the swelling are different and the mass is also tender the mass is also tender and it is not transilluminating then it's prob probably a problem of uh, epididymal tissue so it could be an acute epididymitis obviously because of the reason that it's tender as well but if it is not tender that it could be some chronic infection of uh, the uh, epididymis like tuberculous epididymitis which is rare these days but it could be even varicocele which are uh, dilated tortuous veins so if you feel separate testes from the swelling then the next step is to do a trans illumination test if the trans illumination test is positive remember that is an epididymal cyst if the mass does not trans illuminate then the next step to see whether it's tender or non tender if it is tender it is probably acute epididymitis if it is not tender it's probably chronic epididymitis or it might be varicocele but in case if you feel like the swelling uh, is such is either big or you cannot feel the testes as a separate from separate tissue from the from the uh, that particular swelling then most probably this swelling is engulfing the whole testes then again the next thing is to do a trans illumination test so whether you can feel the testes separately from that swelling or not in both cases you will do the trans illumination test so again you will put up the torch in a dark room and see now if the mass trans so there is a uniform glow that is sure short case of hydrocele because hydrocele and you know engulfs the whole tunic it's actually fluid in the tunica vaginalis so obviously it is enclosing the whole testes so you cannot feel it separately from the from the swelling and it trans illuminates because there is clear fluid inside so if you cannot feel the testes as separate from this uh, mass and it trans illuminates then it is hydrocele if it doesn't trans illuminate again the question is whether the swelling is tender or non tender so again if it is tender like the child is complaining pain or he starts crying then it's either orchitis which is swelling of the testicular tissue or it could be epididymo orchitis or it could be acute hematocele which usually happens after trauma but if there is no pain 
and it does not cross illuminate then uh, you have to be a bit more worried because it could be a gamma it could be a chronic hematocele if the injury was in the past or it might be a testicular cancer so uh, probably in that case more work needs to be done but this is how you approach the pure scrotal swelling so again to summarize it that you have the first thing is whether you can reach above the swelling or not so if you can reach above the swelling it's a pure scrotal swelling then once you know it's pure scrotal swelling you have to feel whether uh, the swelling and the testes are separate from one another or not in both cases whether you can feel them separate or whether you cannot feel them you do the transillumination test so if the transillumination test is positive in case of testes and swelling being separate it would be epididymal cyst if both are non-distinguishable from one another but the mass transillumulates then it is hydrocele if they are not transillumulating in case both are separate then you feel for tenderness if it is tender it is acute epididymitis if not it could be chronic one similarly if you cannot feel for the testes and the swelling to be uh, you know differentiated from one another and they do not transillumulate on the transillumination test again uh, you have to see whether the swelling is tender or not. So if it is tender, it's either torsion, it might be orchitis, it might be epididyma orchitis, or if it is non-tender, then there might be some chronic pathologies responsible for that. So this is how you approach an inguinal scrotal swelling in male children. Obviously, if it is a female, then we call it inguinal labial swelling. And if you've got an inguinal labial swelling, Obviously, uh, there are two things. Either these are inguinal pathologies like uh, um, an uh, indirect or no inguinal hernia. But the only one thing which you need to um, differentiate in this case, you would need to do an ultrasound to see that this swelling is not an ovary. So that's very important that an ultrasound is done to see whether the ovaries are there in situ or not. But rest of the pathologies, if the ovaries are there in place, it's usually inguinal swellings like indirect inguinal hernia. So uh, this is how we approach uh, an inguinal scrotal uh, swelling in uh, male children. Uh, remember, most of the times the swellings are either hydrocele uh, or they are usually indirect uh, inguinal hernia. These are the most common, you know, when we take them by etiology. So here in this child, you can see that there is a large uh, inguinal scrotal swelling. It is coming from the uh, inguinal region and extending into the right side of the scrotum so very big indirect uh, inguinal hernia and on this side you can see uh, a big scrotum uh, swelling in which uh, you cannot differentiate the testes from the from the swelling because the swelling is engulfing the testes from all side and you can see that the torch has been placed on the under surface and there is a uniform glow uh, in the whole swelling which uh, simply means that this is an uh, hydrocele so keep it in mind that indirect inguinal hernias as far as management is concerned so if the child is crying you have to make sure that the child is calm you can give them painkillers and then you have to try manual reduction so if the manual reduction is possible then they need to be on elective list because somewhere in, somewhere down the line they have to be operated and you know this herniography needs to be done to uh, close the defects in the inguinal canal so that the hernia doesn't recur in case of hydrocele uh, you have to wait. Uh, don't do aspiration because recurrences are quite common. Uh, again, uh, most of the urologists they they are of the opinion that they should the children should wait for one to two years, and if it doesn't go away by itself, then uh, obviously uh, surgical correction has to be done. But in terms of etiology, again, the commonest causes of inguinal scrotal hernias are either indirect in inguinal hernias or hydrocele. Obviously, if the uh, swelling uh, is uh, very painful and tender, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a scrotal one, then the most important thing is to rule out a testicular torsion. So either an ultrasound would help or if you are in doubt, then straight away the uh, scrotum has to be open because there is no gold standard for diagnosis of a scrotal uh, of, of a testicular torsion. And uh, again, as I told you that if there is a doubt, then uh, the scrotum has to be open and orchidopexy has to be done but still in terms of statistics the most common cause of inguinal scrotal swellings are again indirect inguinal hernia and hydrocele and again both are surgically uh, need to be surgically corrected uh, but if it is reducible you have to wait but if it is unreducible or if there is um, 
you know sort of an overlying bluish discoloration on that swelling it simply means it's an incarcerated or strangulated inguinal hernia and that becomes a surgical emergency in that particular case the child has to be blue lighted to um uh, you know a center where there is pediatric surgical services and they have to be operated uh, immediately but obviously if uh, it is reducible then uh, it has to be reduced manually and the parents are also taught how to reduce it at home uh, till a corrective surgery can be done at the uh, later stage uh, usually as i told you earlier that they are uh, corrected electively under central that it's strangulated or incarcerated where it becomes an emergency hydrocele's are left till they are operated at one to two years of age sometimes spontaneous resolution can also occur but never drain a hydrocele because you never know uh, what is underlying um, structure and uh, it can be damaged and even if it is hydrocele and you drain it it can reoccur as well so don't do that so i hope uh, in this short uh, lecture you have understood how to clinically approach in coino scrotal swelling in uh, male children and uh, how to make your uh, list of differential diagnoses based on how you do the clinical examination so it's an algorithmic approach you have to go in a stepwise manner and that gives you narrows down your differentials and uh, that you know gives you the possible reasons for these swellings so if you have liked my videos give me a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe right now and share it with your friends and if you've got a question or comment or any query put it down in the comment section below and i will try my level best to get back to you as soon as possible and uh, have a good day bye bye